Today, I'll be building a fully functional driving simulator just using Lego bricks to see if you really need an expensive steering wheel or if Lego can simply just do the job too. Let's find out. This controller will be the core of the build as I plan to connect everything from the steering wheel to the pedals to this thing. If you've been following me for some time, you might know that I've already made a video similar to this. However, I kind of rushed to finish that build and it ended up really flimsy. So this time I'm determined to do this properly. I've now prepared the mechanisms for the steering wheel all the way down to the indicator switch. So let's get building. I then made a second visit to the city to steal another base plate. I'm really destroying my nails doing this. <laughs> ah, there we go. As the next objective is to make and properly connect the pedals. Because last time I connected everything with thread. And while it worked to some extent, it simply was too fragile to use for extended periods of time. So this time I used a fair amount of pieces to hold the pedals in place. And I tried to make the pedals as realistic as possible by using combinations of different shock absorbers for the different pedals. I've now finished building the pedals and they feel really solid actually. Later, however, I will find out that it wasn't as strong as I thought after all. But now I first had to find a way to connect the pedals to the controller. I started by adding a bunch of Technic pieces to the pedals, as my plan was to run a long beam from each pedal to the edge of my desk. More on that later. And that orange crate is just there to keep the pedals in place while sparing a few bricks. When I press the pedal, it pulls down this long beam, which I led to the top of my desk. So now I just need to find a way to connect that to this. The first thing I did was build a layer of plates over the monitor stand to create some support points. I then built a construction of slopes that I attached to the beam so that it would push itself away from the desk as it's pulled down by the pedal. After that, I could build another long beam and lead it to the controller. I mean, it works more or less, but that button is not pushed in far enough. The issue was that the slopes were positioned in a way that they could easily get stuck because of this tiny flat area. So I simply adjusted the construction by placing the slopes the other way around. I've tweaked the mechanism and it now works perfectly. Then I built the same mechanism twice more to also connect the remaining pedals to the controller. And I ended up connecting the center pedal to one of the joysticks because there are only two long travel buttons on the controller which I'd already used up for the other pedals. All of the pedals are now finished and fully functional. Next up is the steering wheel. So I grabbed lots of Technic beams and tried to make a circle. But as we all know, making a perfect circle using Lego can be nearly impossible sometimes. I further built this structure using ordinary Lego bricks to neatly fill up the bottom part of the wheel. Then there were just a few more final touches to add and that's the steering wheel finished. I then spent another hour trying to securely attach the steering wheel to the controller and also building a structure underneath the desk to hold everything in place. The connection to the controller ended up working with a small gear and a gear rack. It just makes a terrible squeaking noise, but other than that, it feels very solid. Oh, that's horrible to listen to. The next task was to make the pedal shifters behind the steering wheel. At first, I thought this would be a really quick and easy build. However, my brain started completely overthinking the mechanism. So I took a quick break and then finally came up with this simple but effective mechanism to connect the pedal shifters with the pieces that make contact with the controller. Okay, this took me a lot longer than I expected, but the pedal shifters are now finally finished as well. One feature I've always missed on my real simulator wheel is an indicator switch. Therefore, I did my best to build one in this LEGO setup. This actually ended up being a really simple build, but we'll see if it works as intended when we get to the testing. I then ordered myself to tidy things up a bit, so I built a big box around the controller to hide all the messy mechanisms. That's everything completed here, but I still have one more thing to build for the entire setup to be finished. That final task was to build a manual gear shifter. I began by building the shifter knob itself, followed by a solid frame around the keyboard. I ended up building a pretty similar mechanism to the other shifter I built a while back, because that worked pretty well. Now we just need to attach this to this and make sure it can press some of the keys. 
This time, I'm using a different keyboard, where I'm able to set custom actuation points, which means that the key doesn't have to be pressed in all the way to be registered. Finally, to finish things off here as well, I again built a simple box around the mechanism. And that's all of the building finished, or so I thought. But first, it was now finally time to put everything together and start the first test drive. I just realized that I quite literally made it impossible to turn the controller on, as, well, the on switch is somewhere in there. <laughs> So, I then spent a considerable amount of time modifying the build to add a button to turn on the controller, only to find out that it wouldn't wirelessly connect to my computer. So, a simple cable ended up doing the job. Okay, let's see how well this thing does. And it pulls away great. Let's test the indicators. Oh, they work very nicely. The steering is a bit, oh, oh, the brake is like already pressed in. Pedal shifters are really nice, but the brake is, okay, I think I need to tweak that a bit. But overall it works, oh, I wanted to say overall it works great, but yeah, the brakes are really annoying. Except for the brakes, the setup works brilliantly with the pedal shifters. However, the same thing couldn't be said for the clutch and manual shifter. Alright, <laughs> that ain't working. <laughs> So I detached the pedals to make some necessary improvements. I started by reinforcing the wall to which the pedals are attached. To improve the connections with the controller, I just made all of the linking points at the pedals a whole lot stronger. I then reconnected the pedals to the controller again, added these rubber bands to ensure the buttons are never pressed in by itself. And just like that, I was ready for round two. All right, let's see if these improvements made any difference. And to my surprise, it now actually worked flawlessly. The pedals are so much more responsive now. And the shifter works brilliantly with this keyboard. And I just love this turn signal switch, how stupid that may sound. But it actually gives you the feeling that you're driving in real traffic. And I actually ended up driving for over an hour. Because I really was blown away by the usability of this LEGO setup. Where the input lag on the last version was just straight up terrible, this still isn't the most responsive, obviously, but it is so much better than last time. Now for the question you've all been waiting for. Is this LEGO setup worth it over a real sim racing wheel? Well, if you already have a keyboard, controller and a bunch of LEGO, yes, I think it could be. But otherwise, I think the setup might actually be even more expensive. So I'd just say it was a fun project. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.